Thank you for staying with us. If you just tuned in, this is Y254 Health and Lifestyle Wednesday. And tonight we are talking about the coronavirus vaccine that has been spoken so much in the recent days. I'm speaking to Dr. Jafed Olubogi from Nigeria. He's the chairman committee on COVID-19 Nigerian Medical Association Lagos Zone. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Hilary. Welcome to Kenya and Y254 Studios. Thank you for having me. Maybe I should begin by asking how is the COVID-19 in Nigeria and in our country so far we are at uh, 79,322 confirmed cases. Yeah, thank you for having me once again. Uh, the COVID-19 situation in Nigeria is not as bad as it is in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, apart from that, it's, um, the cases, number of cases confirmed were also dwindling and going down. Mm -hmm. The EPICOV was uh, receding mm -hmm. until about four weeks ago mm -hmm. when uh, the uh, international flights were opened up. And uh, the, uh, the international flights were opened about uh, six weeks to two months ago. But the effect of that mm -hmm. uh, began uh, coming to forth about uh, four weeks ago when cases started coming up again. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, it's like I said, it's not as serious as uh, it is in Kenya or some other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Because uh, as at um, 24th, which was yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, there were about um, uh, how many thousand cases? About uh, 66,000 cases. Mm -hmm. Just a little above 66,000 cases okay. uh, tested positive. Mm -hmm. And about uh, 1,417 deaths mm -hmm. thereabouts compared to Kenya where you have about 79,000 cases mm -hmm. and about, uh, no, no Nigeria doesn't. has about 1,100 and something deaths. But in Kenya, you have about uh, 1,417 4, deaths. So, yeah. so you have uh, 1,417 deaths from uh, about 79,000 yes. cases. Yes. And Nigeria has uh, about 1,100 deaths from about 66,000 cases. Mm -hmm. And then if you extrapolate the population mm -hmm. of Nigeria compared to that of Kenya, uh, you're talking about maybe four or five times mm -hmm. uh, over. So if you do the maths and uh, you find out that you are expecting, uh, go for it, about uh, maybe 10, five deaths in Nigeria compared to that of Kenya. Mm -hmm. So it's not uh, as bad, but uh, if it's one case, if it's one death, Nobody mm -hmm. wants to be that one case, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, of course, nobody wants to be that one death. Mm -hmm. So, uh, whether it's one thousand deaths or two deaths, uh, it's still serious mm -hmm. because if it affects somebody or somebody's relative, you know that uh, it's serious. Mm -hmm. So, um, the epi curve was flattening in Nigeria, mm -hmm. but now it's picking up again. And uh, one of the reasons uh, we can adduce to that is because people uh, stopped testing. Mm -hmm. uh, people stopped testing. Uh, they, start, they stop going to uh, the test centers, they stop caring mm -hmm. totally uh, because you go to the markets, you go to uh, the buses. We, they, we have transit buses, big buses that we call uh, BRTs. Uh, you find that people are not wearing their mask like they were wearing uh, during the lockdown and the curfew uh, periods. Mm -hmm. Also, people started going to parties, uh, doing social gatherings, and uh, you see them in their hundreds without face masks. So the cases have started going up again. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, I, I am of the opinion that if we test more, right. we probably pick up uh, more cases. And then we cannot um, uh, take away the fact that the opening of the borders and the international travels mm -hmm. may have had some form of effect on that. All right. Maybe the same case is happening in Kenya, but we are to do in the second uh, wave in our country. But now, uh, in the recent days, there has been a conversation on the vaccine, and so many countries have come up to say we have a vaccine. They ha Everyone is now, maybe everyone, is producing their own <laughs> vaccine. But the biggest question would be, now, is the vaccine that is being produced, is it critical for it to help uh, to bring down the COVID-19 or to control it? Oh, yes, absolutely. If you look at the, the uh, pathophysiology of communicable diseases all over the world, mm -hmm. uh, you want to see what is causing this disease, how it's being spread, uh, who are who it's affecting. Uh, COVID-19 is affecting everyone mm -hmm. all over the world. Over mm -hmm. 60 million people affected 
uh, by COVID-19. And because it's affecting and spreading all over the world, even many countries are battling with um, the, the second wave now. Mm -hmm. And then many countries are wary of the second uh, wave already. In Turkey, I understand they recorded the highest number of deaths in a day uh, yesterday or, or thereabouts. Uh, the same thing in California, so many parts of America, and so many parts of Europe. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a big problem. And then when you look at uh, the measures put in place uh, to curb the spread of the virus, mm -hmm. uh, which include the non-pharmaceutical uh, measures, which include uh, the wearing of face masks, maintain, uh, maintaining social distances, washing of hands, and using of hand sanitizer and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, the big question is how many people mm -hmm. are obeying these measures? How many people are observing these measures to the letter? Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned uh, earlier on in Nigeria, too many people have forgotten about the use of face masks, despite the fact mm -hmm. that we, people like me, go on TV all the time mm -hmm. and we tell people, when you wear your face mask, mm -hmm. you are protected against COVID-19 and you are also protecting another person against COVID-19. So people are not all over the world. It's not just mm -hmm. here. It's not, it's not just in Africa. Mm -hmm. So people all over the world are not obeying the social distancing rules as we should. Mm -hmm. We're not wearing our face masks as we should. So. That brings us to the vaccine. The vaccine, if it's up to 80 to 90 percent potent, effective, uh, it will curb the spread of COVID-19. Now, but there are some issues about the vaccine, mm -hmm. uh, and these issues will include safety. First of all, is a vaccine that is being developed safe mm -hmm. to be administered to human beings, number one. Right. Number two, is it potent, that is, is it effective? Will it do the work you want it to do? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, how about storage? Can it be stored under almost any conditions? Because you are, you are distributing it all over the world. Right. So you have to think about the storage. Mm -hmm. It has to be able to be stored for a long time. It has to be able to be stored at optimal temperature. Uh, that is probably uh, available almost everywhere in the world. And then apart from that, about the side effects. Mm -hmm. You have to think about the side effects. A lot of people don't want to take the vaccine because of the side effects. Right. Because uh, we keep saying, yes, it is true. We keep saying COVID-19 is new, uh, with a, a new body of knowledge all the time. So mm -hmm. a lot of people are running away from it. Some people have even associated COVID-19 with the 5G network. <laughs> that is uh, maybe the Antichrist or the something. The conspiracy theories. So yeah, conspiracy. So a lot of people don't want to take it. So is it safe? Mm -hmm. What are the side effects? Now, any vaccine, Mm -hmm. um, may come with one or two side effects. Right. But then again, when the side effects are fatal, are brutal, mm -hmm. uh, you know, life-threatening, then that particular vaccine is not safe. Mm -hmm. And that is why vaccines have to go through at least three stages. Mm -hmm. uh, we call them uh, f um, clinical trials. Mm -hmm. Three stages of clinical trials, the first one, the second one, and the third one. Mm -hmm. Now, in uh, Russia and China, they skipped the third stage. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to be able to, you know, produce vaccines for their people on time. So, uh, which, which are these steps? Yes, the, the, the first one is when you want to test uh, an antigen mm -hmm. uh, in a human or in, a, uh, in an animal to ensure that the body will actually even uh, mount up some, you know, immune system, immune response against the antigen. So, at that first one, that has been done, mm -hmm. uh, a particular vaccine is tested. Uh, to see if the body will mount up some response mm -hmm. against it. So they test that particular vaccine in uh, mouse, rats, and all that. Uh, that's at phase, phase one. Then the latter part of phase one, they test that vaccine in uh, a few people mm -hmm. to see if uh, they can withstand it. Then in phase two, you test that particular vaccine in about 20 to 80 people to see how many of them uh, will do well with it. Uh, if the vaccine will actually cure or prevent what you wanted to prevent. Then the first three is when you test it in several thousands of people, up to 10,000 and upwards of people. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, these stages all take numbers of years, a long period of time. Now, because COVID is uh, uh, very serious and the world is giving it all the attention it deserves, mm -hmm. some uh, approving authorities try to you know, fast track all these stages so that we can have uh, vaccines that are that are potent and safe mm -hmm. in the whole world as soon as possible so russia and china skipped the third part of it where you test it uh in different 
uh, numbers of people, including women and children, including pregnant women, including uh, elderly, so that you can see how the vaccine uh, does in them. each category of persons. Okay. Now, if you don't do that, you wouldn't know how the vaccine would do in children, mm -hmm. how it would do in adults or in the elderly, how it would do in women, or how it will actually perform in pregnant women. Mm -hmm. So if that is done, or if that is not done, it, that particular vaccine may not be safe because oh. it, it, it carries that attendant uh, risk mm -hmm. uh, with it. And then apart from that, uh, the, the, the first two, we want to determine the dosage that uh, each person will actually need or the dosage that is actually safe mm -hmm. for human uh, being to use mm -hmm. and then the mode of administering the mode of administration of that uh, particular vaccine so all these things go mm -hmm. uh, uh, are on on the ground that people don't know about mm -hmm. so uh, producing a vaccine is not just uh, 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 a meat at all but if we have a vaccine that mm -hmm. is potent there are about six of them now mm -hmm. that have reached stage three out of about 87 that have been developed mm -hmm. uh, about 87 vaccines are, are going through clinical trials at phase one about 37 of them have gotten to uh, phase two i think mm -hmm. then even lesser numbers have uh, gotten to um, uh, phase 2b, which is a later stage of phase 2. And then six of them have actually reached phase 3 now. That means that they are safe okay. to be used. They are just awaiting the FDA's approval. No, no. Uh, so many countries are making these vaccines. And maybe one would ask if I get uh, one vaccine and maybe the other one, maybe get two vaccines which are different, <laughs> <laughs> will they help boost uh, the the effectiveness and in any case how how long will this uh, immune of the vaccine last yeah the the, the vaccine is supposed to last for uh, eternity as it uh, i mean for life mm -hmm. but then again you know uh, vaccines like that of yellow fever only last for about 10 years or thereabout mm -hmm. or it could last for life but at least you can guarantee that it can last for 10 years so the uh, manufacturers will come out to tell us mm -hmm. how long their own vaccines uh, can last. Mm -hmm. uh, I recall that AstraZeneca has a vaccine now which they claim is about 94% effective. Mm -hmm. Then I think uh, Sinovac also have a vaccine that is about 90% effective. But we would like to know if um, it's going to like, uh, last for life mm -hmm. or a number of years. But I think a lot of people are working on the vaccine to last for life. Mm -hmm. So if we can have a uh, safe important vaccines, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be able to curb uh, the spread of COVID-19. And I think that is what the world needs now because not so many people want to be wearing masks around. Not so many people want to be washing their hands everywhere they go. Mm -hmm. If you go to uh, some slums, especially, mm -hmm. uh, you would wonder how people can spread, how government itself can curb the spread of COVID-19 because people live closely together. Yeah, uh, they the dine and wine closely together. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they, they exchange uh, you know market and all that uh, mm -hmm. and then apart from that people would always want to travel mm -hmm. uh, human beings are nomadic in nature they always want to move from one place to the other mm -hmm. so it is a vaccine a potent and safe vaccine that can nip uh, COVID-19 in the pot. Now in the interest of time tell, tell me this we have so many recoveries being recorded and the vaccine is here if someone who has recovered from COVID-19 they get the vaccine uh, are they are they uh, prone to get uh, to transfer because we've been speaking of um, symptomatic and asymptomatic yeah, persons? If someone has has the vaccine, and are they able to maybe transfer it to susceptible persons? No, uh, I don't think so. Uh, mm -hmm. Although uh, a lot of information is coming forth uh, mm -hmm. from uh, COVID nineteen vaccine and all that, uh, but then again. Uh, the, the way vaccines work is that they prevent you from uh, being able to infect another person. In fact, we talk about uh, herd immunity. If at least 80% of the population can take the vaccine, mm -hmm. uh, you are able to, you be able to control that particular disease in that particular community. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like you said uh, the other time that you want to take two. Well, if you take two, the better for you. But then again, the side effects mm -hmm. uh, of those two vaccines, we are not sure. Mm -hmm. So you may not develop a side effect to one, you may develop two side effects to the other one. You may even develop a side effect because of the cross mm -hmm. reaction of the vaccines. Mm -hmm. So uh, if somebody takes a potent vaccine, you're not likely to be able to transfer mm -hmm. the infection to another person. And uh, lastly, if I have the vaccine, do I still need to wear my mask 
And um, <laughs> do, uh, what if I don't want to get the vaccine? Oh, yeah. Uh, like I said earlier on, a lot of people don't want to get the vaccine. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want to get the vaccine, just wear a face mask mm -hmm. everywhere you go. Because it has been proven uh, scientifically that it, when you wear your face mask, you are not likely to transfer mm -hmm. or transmit the uh, a virus. And you are not likely to contract uh, the virus from anyone. So if you don't want to get the vaccine, uh, wear your face mask. In fact, I once tweeted that mm -hmm. if at least 80% of us wear our face mask, mm -hmm. we will be able to control and stop the spread of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. But how many percentage of the, the populace uh, actually wear their uh, face mask? So uh, if anybody doesn't want to take the vaccine, you should wear your face mask. If you want to, if you take the uh, vaccine, you can still wear your face mask mm -hmm. uh, to be sure. Uh, to be double sure because uh, these vaccines have not been around for so long. In fact, mm -hmm. I worry for Africa because uh, distribution was one of the issues I wanted to mention about the vaccine. Absolutely. If America is already planning on how to get the vaccine to their uh, people, they're planning on how to give a, patent, uh, a particular percentage mm -hmm. to the elderly, a particular percentage to the needy, to the poor, a particular percentage to those at the highest risk, the health workers and all that. Mm -hmm. So uh, how long? Will it take the vaccine to get to Africa? Mm -hmm. How long will it be distributed? Is it, would it be affordable? Mm -hmm. Would it be accessible to you and I? And if we come up with our own, will it be approved by the WHO? And if we come up with our own, would it be able to make it to stage three, mm -hmm. let alone stage four? There's a stage four, mm -hmm. and that stage four is when it is approved by the Food and Drug uh, Administration and all that. All right, um, we are out of time. Please give us your final recommendations on how you feel about the vaccine. Should we go for it? Yes, uh, I would like to uh, appeal to uh, the pharmaceutical companies to uh, put heads together mm -hmm. and uh, give Africa uh, a vaccine on time. Mm -hmm. I also like to appeal to the political office holders, the uh, leaders, uh, political leaders, to do everything possible to uh, procure uh, the vaccines for Africa mm -hmm. uh, populace because uh, uh, not so many people want to wear their face masks. No, so many people want to obey the social distancing rules. So uh, the vaccine is what can save us. Mm -hmm. uh, we are lucky in this part of Africa because for one reason or the other, it is not as serious as it is in the, <laughs> in the US and the Europe. Yeah. Uh, and then this is uh, worrying the Americans and the Europeans. But then again, we shouldn't leave it to chances. And then uh, mm -hmm. to the populace, in the meantime, let us protect ourselves. Let us protect our loved ones. Mm -hmm. Let us protect uh, the vulnerables, mm -hmm. which are the elderly mm -hmm. and those who may have one comorbid uh, disease or the other, like diabetes, hypertension, kidney mm -hmm. disease, heart diseases, and all that. These are the people who uh, fall prey to COVID-19 easily and then uh, die easily from it. So we should wear our face masks. We should protect them and protect our loved ones. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Doctor, for coming and speaking to us on Matters Live Vaccine. And I wish you the best as you continue to enjoy your vacation here in Kenya. Thank uh, you. Please visit so many places and you'll go with some good news. And back home, thank you so much for staying with us. I hope you have learned something. Even as we wait on the vaccine, uh, personal responsibility is key. Like the CS for Health, the Motaika, we keeps on telling us the Kenyans, personal responsibility is very much key. My name is Dereva Hillary. I was speaking to Dr. Jafet Olubogi from Nigeria. He's the chairman committee on COVID-19, Nigeria Medical Association, Lagos, zone and that marks the end of this broadcast have yourself a very good night see you on monday good night